Thank you, Kathy. Yes, it's impossible to avoid AI nowadays, and, and we at Dimensional Insight uh, are also looking into how we can leverage these latest technologies. But to cut through all the hype, it's worth having a look at the, the more than 70-year history of AI developments. So let's head back to the 40s and 50s. This is Alan Turing, and he published a seminal article about the Turing test back in 1950. Claude Shannon, the father of the information age, he developed the May Solving Mouse in, in 51. In 56, we had the Dartmouth Conference, which brought together the leading thinkers of the time and coined the term artificial intelligence. And we closed out the decade with uh, the first artificial neural network developed by Cornell psychologist Frank Rosenblatt. Things picked up further in the 60s. Uh, Joseph Weizenbaum developed Eliza, the first chatbot. Um, and uh, in 1970, we had uh, the first human-like robot developed by Waseda University in, in Japan. And in the mid-70s, Stanford University developed uh, an early expert system for identifying infectious bacteria called mycin. Now, all these tools suggested AI's great potential, but they were very limited to very specific areas. And the initial excitement uh, faded, governments lost interest, funding evaporated, and we headed into the first AI winter. In the 80s, we saw Japan invest nearly a billion dollars in their fifth generation computer project, which boosted interest worldwide in AI. Um, expert systems were being increasingly adopted, uh, like Xcon, which was used by um, GEC uh, Digital Equipment, developed by John McDermott, to reduce costs for their complex computer ordering process. And also interesting to note is that Mercedes Benz started their self driving program back in 1986 using this van as a prototype to house all the equipment. And this all led to unrealistic expectations once again and unfulfilled promises. And once again, governments cut funding, the AI wave uh, flattened, and the second winter arrived. Now, the 90s, they, despite starting slow as a result of the winter, saw some real progress with neural networks and, and deep learning uh, being, uh, being used. And of course, the internet's rise offered a lot of data. IBM's Deep Blue beat Kasparov in 1997. Uh, in 2000, we had a Honda with the Asimo robot uh, being able to deliver food in a restaurant setting. 2007 saw the development of Princeton's ImageNet database, which boosted image recognition work. 2009, GPUs were promoted by Andrew Ng and his team because of their parallel processing powers. Uh, Apple launched Siri back in 11. In 2016, uh, AlphaGo beat the current world champion in a, in a major achievement. 17, we saw Google's Transformer uh, models. Uh, and these are a major jump in, in deep learning capability. And at the end of the decade, AlphaFold, led by the CEO, Demis Hassabis, solved the incredibly difficult protein folding problem. And now we're in the, the, the age of the large language models uh, with OpenAI's GPT-3 uh, leading the way in May 2020. The chat version, chat GPT, has gained hundreds of, uh, of hundreds of million, hundreds of millions of users uh, in, a, in, a, in a very short space of time after being launched in November last year. Um, and now all the tech giants are, are, are heavily involved. Google launched Bard. Um, uh, Meta open sourced its Llama 2 model uh, in three different billion parameter strengths. Now, um, we can break this history down into roughly two main philosophical periods. Uh, before the turn of the century, the focus was encoding human intelligence, hence the term artificial intelligence in the title, um, and encoding this into machines. So basically humans telling machines to do what humans do. Um, and this is the symbolism approach. And expert systems are a good example of that. While this century has been about letting machines learn, and in so doing, creating new artificial intelligence. Um, Machines doing what they have taught themselves to do uh, based on deep learning algorithms developed by humans. And this is the connectionism approach. It's basically left brain versus right brain uh, split. And just like human intelligence relies on both halves of the brain, hybrid third generation uh, neuro symbolic models are now gaining a lot of attention as, as, a, as an encouraging way forward. And what's so special about large language models? Well, they appear to have removed uh, the model bottleneck in the AI uh, triad of, of drivers of progress. Um, the three drivers are uh, the models themselves, available data, and, and the computing power. And it's often computing power that's, that's the major driver. 
But now with the large language models, um, being able to handle various types of tasks, like the ones listed here, all of them as language translations, progress in, in a certain field is, is now relevant for other fields. So we've seen this great consolidation of, 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 uh, of progress and it's accelerating ov overall AI progress uh, in many fields. Um, and it, it's becoming an exciting, some think even frightening uh, future that we are heading into. So with that as a brief overview, uh, let me hand you uh, on to Fred. 